some insight. Mm-hmm. And now what is your, uh, you're, you're a therapist. I'm, yes, sir, I'm an occupational therapist. Okay, and, and explain to me in the viewing audience about your work, what does an occupational therapist do? Well, within um, early intervention, birth till th- up until three, you know, there, there's often a lot of overlap mm-hmm. within the different uh, degrees, you know. Um, as an OT, um, you know, I would often, uh, I would look at uh, the motor aspect mm-hmm. oftentimes, you know, if, if they're having some type of uh, motor difficulty, and I would kind of look at how is that impacting their ability to, to, to play, right. to uh, be able to uh, feed themselves, you know. Mm-hmm. Are they able to actually hold a spoon and bring it to their mouth? Okay. You know, or even are they even able to, to sit in a high chair without support? And you know, so so uh, you know, I would work with helping the child to gain those skills to perform um, their age appropriate activities. Right. Of play, of eating, of bath time, of whatever that might be for a, a young child. So that's so wonderful, and you know, it, skills goes a long way with the parents and showing them. And you got to know these certain mm-hmm. skills, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. And it, it's like you were saying, like setting up in the high chair and stuff. You, uh, you know, get in there, get involved. Sure, yes. Um, you know, and, and um, oftentimes, you know, there's, we have to, it's always kind of an ongoing evaluation. You, you kind of have the initial evaluation, mm-hmm. but you're always, and you have a, a plan, you know, the family plan, right. and you're working towards that. And you're kind of using the uh, uh, the concerns of the family and and and, and whatnot, but um, you know to to use the the motor thing. You know, we we take for granted oftentimes mm-hmm. our skills and our abilities because we naturally have them. Right. But oftentimes, you, you take someone that uh, does not have the the motor abilities. And right. So it's a challenge. So you, and it's a challenge as a therapist and as a parent to, and other caregivers to help figure out ways to to help help the child. So you go into people's homes. I mean, you do home visits oh, and yeah. everything. The majority of our services take place in the family's home. Now, some of the situations you might encounter is my child is not eating. Mm-hmm. My child won't eat. I'm I'm trying to feed it and it just mm-hmm. refuses to eat. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. How would you deal with something like that? Well, in those situations, oftentimes we're trying to figure out, okay, why is it? And generally with feeding issues, oftentimes they uh, have some uh, uh, like sensory defensiveness to the food. Maybe the food, Mm -hmm. uh, various textures of food just doesn't feel right. Right. So they don't want to put it in their mouth. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes they may have... uh, even a hypersensitivity to the smell. It could mm-hmm. be the, the way the, the food smells. It could be the way the food looks. Mm-hmm. You know, we, we, uh, you know, we, we kind of process the world differently. And, exactly. And sometimes children that are having some of those issues, you know, are, are hyper aware of, of that type of thing. Mm-hmm. What if a, like a three-year-old or a two-year-old is beyond hyper? I mean, they just... Uh, you know, and is that a concern for a lot of parents? Well, yeah, oftentimes it is. You know, you got, you know, the, 